Some animals don't realize they've lost control until it's far too late. They keep functioning, moving, and eating, while a parasite uses them as food, transportation, or spare parts. Red Snapper, the tenant from hell. If you're a rose snapper swimming in the Gulf of California, your mouth isn't just for eating, it's prime real estate. Enter Cymothoa exigua, a parasitic isopod that decides your throat is the perfect studio apartment. This little nightmare crawls in through your gills and clamps onto the base of your tongue like a biological vice grip. It doesn't just bite, it drains the blood supply until the tongue atrophies, withers away, and literally falls off. But here's the twisted part. The isopod doesn't leave. It hooks its seven pairs of legs into the remaining muscle stub and becomes your new functional tongue. You spend the rest of your life using a living, defecating crustacean to swallow your food. It's the only known case of a parasite functionally replacing an entire organ. You're not just a fish anymore. You're a rideshare for a parasite that's sitting in your seat, stealing your nutrients and watching the world go by from inside your face. Snail the neon sacrifice. Nature is a terrible interior designer, and the flatworm Leucochloridium is the proof. This parasite invades a snail's eye stalks and pumps them full of pulsating green and yellow striped larvae until they look like a strobe light at a bad rave. This transformation effectively blinds the snail, but the worm is just getting started. It hijacks the snail's brain, overriding its don't-get-eaten software. Usually, snails love the damp, dark safety of leaf litter, but this zombie snail is forced to climb to the highest, most exposed leaf it can find. To a bird, those throbbing eyes look like juicy, wiggling caterpillars. The bird swoops in, rips the eyes off, and the cycle repeats. The snail often survives the attack and regrows its eyes, only for the next batch of larvae to be waiting in the wings. It's a subscription service for trauma where you're the only one paying the bill. Frog, the biohazard glitch. If you find a frog with six legs, it's not an X-Men candidate. It's a victim of a biological glitch called Ribiroya ondatre. This flatworm infects tadpoles right when their limbs are budding, physically jamming the cells signaling like a malicious hacker. The result is a biological car wreck, extra legs, twisted stumps, or limbs growing out of places they shouldn't. But this isn't an accident, it's a strategy. A frog with too many legs is a terrible athlete. It can't jump, it can't swim, and it's essentially a slow-moving, multi-legged buffet for the herons the parasite needs to reach next. Evolution didn't just fail this frog. It broke its getaway vehicle just so a bird could have an easier time catching its lunch. Crab, the hostile takeover. The parasite Saculina doesn't just live in the crab, it uninstalls its soul. It starts as a tiny larva that injects a few cells into the crab and then grows a root-like network through every inch of its body, wrapping around nerves, the gut, and eventually, the reproductive organs. The parasite then grows a massive external sac where the crab's eggs should be. But here's the peak horror. It chemically brainwashes the crab, even the males, into feminizing. The crab loses all interest in its own survival and spends its days cleaning, protecting, and mothering the parasite's larvae. When the larvae are ready, the crab even performs a spawning dance to help release them. The crab isn't just a host, it's a hijacked nanny for the very monster that sterilized it. Caterpillar, the living nursery. Parasitic wasps like Cotesia have turned the caterpillar into a living, breathing vending machine. The wasp stings the host, injecting dozens of eggs and a specialized virus to suppress its immune system. When the larvae hatch, they are careful eaters. They devour the non-essential fats first, keeping the caterpillar alive, because nobody likes spoiled meat. When they've had their fill, they chew their way through the skin in a coordinated bloody breakout. But the real insult, a few larvae stay behind to pilot the caterpillar's brain. The dying host then stands guard over the wasp cocoons, thrashing its head violently to fight off predators to protect the very monsters that just ate its insides. It's a level of Stockholm Syndrome that would make a psychologist weep. Wapiti deer, the breathing holes. The botfly is the ultimate low-effort parent. It sticks its eggs to grass, waits for a deer to walk by, and lets body heat do the hatching. The larvae burrow under the skin, 
and grow into spiny, thumb-sized maggots that chew breathing holes directly through the hide. But for the Wapiti, the horror is a multiplayer game. While the maggots are rotating inside its muscles, tens of thousands of winter ticks are often draining its blood simultaneously. We're talking up to 100,000 ticks on a single animal. These ghost deer become so distracted by the constant itching and the sensation of thousands of tiny mouths drinking them dry that they forget to eat or seek shelter. They wander through the snow, white with ticks, and hollowed out by maggots. In the end, you don't even know what kills them first. The internal parasites, the external bloodsuckers, or the sheer exhaustion of being a walking blood bank. Sunfish, the floating hotel. The ocean sunfish, or mola mola, is a 2,000 pound evolutionary participation trophy. It's so slow and has skin with the texture of wet sandpaper, making it the Grand Hyatt of the ocean. Scientists have found over 50 different species of parasites living on a single sunfish, in its gills, on its skin, and even burrowed into its eyes. Some of these parasites are themselves carrying smaller parasites. It's a nesting doll of misery. The fish is so heavily infested that it has to float sideways on the surface, hoping a passing seagull will land on it and rip the parasites out of its flesh like a biological car wash. When your primary survival strategy is, hope a bird eats the things currently eating me, you've officially lost at life. Imagine being so covered in bugs that you literally offer yourself as a bird feeder just for a moment of relief. Rat, the walking zoo. Finally, we have the rat. While other parasites are specialists, the rat is a generalist, the high-speed rail of the pathogen world. It doesn't just carry one killer. It's a mobile ecosystem for fleas, ticks, tapeworms, and toxoplasma. Rats are the final boss of this list because they are the bridge between the wild and your pantry. Most of the time, the rat is just a biological vessel, transporting a lethal payload of plague-adjacent organisms directly into human territory. It's not just an animal. It's a walking biohazard that pays its rent in fleas and leaves a trail of biological software updates. This mouse dashes off with a sponge. You're so f***ed. This guy is so freaked out, he chucks his shoe at the mouse on his stove top. This hungry little fella climbs right out of the stove and steals himself an Oreo. Wherever it crawls, they are the ultimate proof that evolution doesn't care about the host. It only cares about the transmission. Nature doesn't care about your personal space. It only cares about who's currently winning the lease on your internal organs. Every time you feel a random itch or a twitch in your eyelid, just remember these guys. Be glad you're the one watching this instead of being the menu. Stay curious.